Hello my YouTube friends. In this video I'm going to try my hand at a Tamiya kit. I've never built a tank before. Never built a Tamiya kit. Let's see what happens. I got this tank for Christmas. Thanks Chris. This is going to be fun. I hope. So, looking at the parts, looks simple and straightforward. Instructions look like they're easy to follow. So here we go. Start cutting out the pieces and magically, after a little bit of cleaning up, they fit together so good. This is night and day compared to that Ravel F16 I built last time. No wonder people say that Tamiya kits are so good. This is awesome. I can't wait to build more of these. So this thing comes with some little weight things, metal weights. I'm not sure what the point is. This is just a plastic model kit. But I figured I should follow the instructions and put them in. So I did. I used some of that nail super glue that I've had for a while. And that did the trick. There's a lot of really tiny pieces on this kit and uh, it's not easy to put them on if you have fat fingers like me, especially if you're wearing gloves. I wouldn't recommend wearing gloves. I should have taken them off. Probably would have made it easier, but I still have fat fingers. But small pieces means lots of detail, which means hopefully this thing will look pretty cool when it's done. I've watched videos of tank modelers and some of them complain about how boring it is to work on wheels and now I understand what they mean. Lots of wheels doing the same thing over and over again but it's got to be done. And now we move on to the tracks. I don't know how much time I've spent on Night Shift's channel, but it's a lot. I think I've watched all of his videos multiple times and uh, I'm glad I did because I learned a lot of cool things and I hope to apply them in this build. One of the things I learned from him had to do with tracks and how to put them together. I'm gonna try to follow his idea of gluing them all together flat and then wrapping them around all the wheels and hope that works thanks uncle my shift you're, you're awesome, awesome. Well, this is definitely a good idea, probably the best way to do it, but it's not as easy as I thought. Kind of kept falling apart. Maybe I was doing it wrong. I don't know. Eventually I got it to fit though. I did decide to leave one part open so that I could take the track off. I wanted to be able to paint it separately because that's what the pros do and I want to be a pro too.
Their upper hull was also a lot of fun to do. After cleaning up the parts, they just fell into place and it looks so good. Now these little parts were not really fun. There's like 20 of them. No, there's like 24 of them. And, and they're really hard to put into place. I have crappy tweezers and fat fingers. So this took a lot longer than it should have. Putting the turret together was like magic. It's a really complicated shape and the seams are in kind of weird places, but if you follow the instructions and put the pieces together in the order that the instructions say to, this is just another part that just falls together and it's amazing. For this little machine gun part that goes on the top, I didn't really like the barrel on it. it. It just didn't look straight. So I cut it off and decided to do something else with it. So a long time ago, I worked in a place that made wire harnesses that would go into airplanes. And those wire harnesses had connector pins that would go on them and they would plug plug into the individual components in the airplane. Well, this place, I guess, ordered a whole bunch of the wrong ones and they threw them all out. And I thought, man, these are so cool. I could use these for something. And so I grabbed them all out of the garbage and brought them home. And it just so happens that I think this is the perfect application to try and use one of them. And I found a similar size and shape pin component thingy. So I cut the barrel off. Let's have a look at the replay. William, move your head. And I glued it on. Look at the size of that boy's head. Shh. I'm not kidding, it's like an orange on a toothpick. Shh, you gotta give the boy a complex. Well, that's a huge noggin. It's a virtual planetoid. Shh. Has its own weather system. Shh. Heat, move. There really wasn't a whole lot of surface area to glue it on, so I kind of had to make a, a lump of super glue, but it worked. You can actually see there's like an open barrel now, which is kind of cool. And now it's time to do some priming. I watched a lot of videos and I've heard a lot of things about a lot of different paints. And some people say some paints are better than others. I don't know which one is the best, but I went with Vallejo paints and they seem to work okay for me. And I really like the way they smell. They don't smell like paint thinner, which I can't stand. They actually smell sweet, they're kind of like candy. So I'm using Vallejo Surface Primer Black and I will spray the entire thing. They say black is a good primer for 
tanks because there's a lot of nooks and crannies that might not get paint later on and black will help make it look like a shadow if I forget to paint somewhere which inevitably I'm going to do. I'm still not very good with the airbrush. I got a lot to learn, but I guess practice makes perfect, so I'm gonna just keep trying. Another thing about painting is what colors should I use? I don't know. Lots of people say lots of different things about different tanks and stuff. I just found this cool looking set on Amazon. So I bought it and I'll use these paints. There's this Vallejo olive drab color looks good enough to me. I am not an expert on tanks, let alone World War II tanks. I don't know anything about them. The only thing I know is that this tank is called an M4 Sherman because it's on the box. I'm just building it because I think it looks cool and hopefully it'll turn out good at the end. So I don't know if olive drab or this specific olive drab is the right color, but I'm gonna use it because that's good enough for me. And the point of this build is to apply some techniques that I've learned from other people and see if I can make them work for me or if I come up with something easier or better for myself and I'll share that with you. Chances are though I'm not going to come up with something better than all of the pros. They've been doing this for a lot longer than me and I trust them. One of the many cool things that I've learned from Uncle Night Shift is how to apply different shades of the same color. I can't even remember what he calls it, but it's where you put a base coat on and then you mix that color with a lighter color and then spray some of the highlights and then you add more light to it. You spray even less areas, really highlight stuff and it makes the paint job a little bit more dynamic. So that's what I did. I put down a base coat of the olive drab and then I added a little bit of the khaki color that came in that set and I added about 20% of it, sprayed some parts, added 20% more, sprayed some other parts and I think it looks kind of cool. I put the base coat on a little thicker than I would have liked. And so the black primer really got washed out and I wanted to bring some of that back. So I decided to do a little bit of post shading. So out comes the black paint. I mixed it with a little bit of olive drab so that it wasn't completely black. And then I went around some of the panel lines to try to give it a little bit of post shading. Apparently that's what you do. I went with this German gray color. It looks more like really, really dark rust. 
color for the tracks because I think it'll be a good base color for all of the rust and dirt and weather effects that I want to put on it. I think it'll be a good color for that. I could totally be wrong. We'll have to find out at the end of the video. I got this cool set here from Vallejo and I decided to follow the steps that Night Shift has in this video here. But basically what he does is he uses four rust colors and paints them onto the tracks, starting with the lightest and then going darker and darker. Looks like a good plan to me. I don't have the same paints as him uh, because I'm kind of sold on this Vallejo stuff, but I'm going to follow the same steps. So I'll start with the light color. It's almost like a yellow. Mix it with water, kind of turn it into a wash and cover all of the tank track tread thingies. I took some of the base color olive drab and I added a little bit of the khaki color to it to make it a little bit lighter and then I started going over some of the details with it to highlight them. And now it's time to do some chipping. I grabbed a little piece of foam, grabbed a really light color from my set, and went to work with the sponge trying to add chipping. It doesn't look as good as I would have liked, but it's my first time.
I applied a gloss clear coat using Pledge Future, and then I started with the decals. There was only five of them, little star icon looking thingies, and they went on with no problem whatsoever. The next step was to add some oil paints. I grabbed two colors, a light one and a dark one, and I thinned it with a little bit of mineral spirits, and then I started putting dots everywhere. I used both colors with the idea that it would give a lot of variation. Once all of the dots were done, I grabbed my mineral spirits, dipped the brush in, and then I started to blend the colors together. This was actually a really fun process. To do some dry mud effects, I went cheap. I bought a 50 cent craft paint and I painted it all over the tracks and the wheels. This probably wasn't a good idea, but take a look, you can judge for yourself. Now it's time to give it the panel line treatment. The Tamiya black panel liner is probably a little too strong for this. I probably should have gone with a dark brown color or even made my own oil wash. But this is what I had and so that's what I used. So here's a real frustrating part. I was looking forward to playing with these new pigments that I got and I went to town with it. I brushed them all over and then my camera died and I didn't know. And I probably spent like 45 minutes adding pigments, dry brushing them on, then mixing with a little bit of water and matte varnish. I think it turned out pretty cool, but you don't get to see how I did it unfortunately. Sorry. So here we are on the final stretch, finishing everything up. I found an old bottle of dull coat from testers and I sprayed that all over everything to make sure that all of the surfaces were unified and completely matte. Then I went ahead and finished up the little machine gun, gave it a little bit of extra paint, paint over the gloss primer. And I can see that I didn't prime it very well. There's some spots. So I went in with some matte black and finished it up. Right, here we go the final step putting everything together this was not easy because there's so much paint and stuff the tracks didn't want to go on they fell apart they didn't go back together the way they did in the beginning there's gaps and I'm a lot smarter than I used to be I learned that there's a specific place you should put your gaps if you want to take the tracks off for painting and I will remember that for the future. But as you can see here, I struggled and struggled and struggled, but eventually I got it to kind of work and the broken gaps are at least semi hidden. So yeah, I did my best. After that, it was all done. So enjoy the final reveal.
If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Give me a like. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I look forward to sharing my journey with you as I continue learning more and gaining more experience. Leave me a comment below if you have any suggestions on how I can improve and I will take those into consideration on future videos. My plan is to do all kinds of models, not just planes and tanks. I want to do cars and boats, spaceships, star destroyers, all kinds of stuff. So stay tuned and we'll see you next time.